everyone and welcome to the July 2022 webinar movie. As always, we at Movie bring you some of the hottest and trending topics of the world of streaming and OTT. My name is Aditya and I'm the corporate communication manager at Movie and I'll be your host today. Uh Rohan if you can just move the slides please. So much. Now before we start, I would request the audience to keep posting the questions in the Q&A chat only. We will address them at the end of the session. With this, I would like to take the opportunity to give you a quick overview of Movie. Now, founded in 2011, Movie is headquartered in New York and was founded with the vision to disrupt the global video and audio streaming market. Today, we stand as one of the leading players in the streaming platform service space, while at rest with time has led us to the development of multiple products with several more in the pipeline. Our key product, Movie One, offers an end-to-end -end solution to launch your own customizable, agile, scalable OTT streaming and live streaming platforms with zero code. Now, having spoken about our domain expertise, let's get on with today's webinar. Now, over the years, communication has evolved very rapidly, making it a necessity of our day-to-day lives. And one thing that lies in the center of all is the smartphone. These mobile devices have become the heart and soul of our communication and content consumption journeys. Fun fact, did you know that there are 6.6 .6 billion smartphone users in the world today? That's over 83% of the global populations. What's staggering is that this number was at 3.6 billion in 2016. That's below 50% of the world population then. With such a high growth rate, it is predicted that in the next three years, we'll see the number of mobile devices users will reach 7.56 billion, surpassing the number of people in the world, thus making this the fastest growing human-made technology phenomena ever so much. Now, the upsurge of smartphone has affected two sectors, particularly in the telecom ecosystem. Firstly, the operators who are the data providers, and secondly, apps and OTT players who are the data consumers. With the CAGR of 46%, the mobile data traffic is expected to reach 77 exabytes per month worldwide. With this webinar, we propound, we propound revenue sharing models of mobile operators and over the top players in an attempt to seek a solution to the complex challenge of falling voice average revenue per user, which is the ARPU rates for operators due to this emergence of OTT services and the need for monetization of services by OTT players. Today, we quantify this opportunity, highlight some of the partnership models that can be taken as suggestive measures to revitalize this revenue growth for both operators and OTT players. We talk about, we talk about service building, we talk about sponsored data, we also talk about collaboration platform model. Now, to help us understand this better, we have today our guest speaker, Mr. Rohan Goy, VP Business Development Movie. Having done his MBA in marketing with, after his bachelor's in engineering, Rohan comes with over 15 years of experience in business development leadership and shares our aura of versatility in building and managing new revenue lines for various SaaS organizations over the last eight years. Rohan speaks himself as a lifelong learner who believes in upgrading his skill sets with the latest technology and trends. On a personal note, Rohan loves to paint landscapes and is an avid reader of a person with a personal library of over 500 books. So with further ado, without further ado, I, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome Rohan. Thank him for taking out time to conduct this webinar. Thank you so much, Rohan, for joining in. Rohan, I guess you've been on your so thanks, Aditya. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for taking time out. Uh, this uh, hopefully will be an insightful session for you, where we share uh, all our learnings that we've gone across working with multiple uh, mobile operators across the world, uh, talking to their leadership and understanding what's uh, really happening uh, from the telecom side of things. Also, Movie being a, a SaaS platform for getting your OTT platform up in maybe just less than a week. We speak to thousands of customers globally and also know their aspirations in terms of how to monetize their content and how to control customer churn. So I think uh, we have those perspectives and we bring those perspectives to you uh, in the next 30 minutes or so. Um, so uh, let's uh, talk about uh, how the world looks like. Uh, 
it it's obviously has three facets the biggest facet there is the customer uh, for all all of us who are in a b2b business uh, the customer is where the rubber meets the road and hence his perspective is the strongest um and then obviously we have the ott platform who uh, also uh, have really uh, grown in terms of uh, their uh, uh, reach uh, go to market and customer uh, choice in terms of consuming different kinds of content and going on the platform which obviously covid was a big catalyst uh, so that is the second perspective and the third obviously is the telecom operator which is the distribution giant uh, for uh, the ott platform but also they want to retain customers so customers today um, uh, are very fickle and telecom uh, would also want to retain those customers uh, number one and the second obviously is to how do we increase our reach so they are looking at it ott platforms as one of those ways to do both so let's talk about what the customer wants today right you and me we are uh, customers also i'm sure a lot of us uh, uh, consume a lot of content on various ott platforms but i think are we loyal i think we are loyal to the content rather than to the platform right so uh, we want to watch all our favorite shows um, but we are not loyal to any ott platform i think uh, there were some stats that i was reading that uh, most of the customers would have about 2.6 subscriptions uh like so it may be a uh, netflix or an amazon prime and maybe one local or a regional ott content player or whatever the mix is depending on your on on what you like to consume uh but since uh, because of the exposure that the customer today is getting it not be regional content but also international content uh different uh, genres of content customers become more demanding so they they are not ready today to have Uh, uh content which does not appeal to them uh, they are not ready to consume content which is not uh, uh, of a quality that they are now getting used to so i think uh, those those are two two very very important things that ott platforms have realized also uh, customers today want tv shows they want sports they want lifestyle so it's not only about movies and um uh, tv series anymore they also want to consume a lot more content they want to consume sports on the go uh, they want to uh, also look at health and fitness and these are growing trends that we'll see so it's if you essentially see it um, for an ott platform it's uh, not only horizontal it's not only vertical they are also wanting to think horizontal now because the customer is thinking about that so how how does the telecom player think to do this and we've been talking to various telecom players some of them are our very uh, very prominent customers where they say that you know uh, today data drives everything right we had the the era where there was vas that was giving this additional revenue uh, then there was an era where voice and sms gave us a lot of revenue today data is where the bulk of the revenue lies so uh, there is additional sources of revenue that you can uh, look at by uh, customers purchasing additional data packs uh, or uh, you can look at different kinds of commercial modeling we'll talk about that in the uh, succeeding slides but uh, essentially it's an additional source of revenue um the most important thing is that it also helps uh, with customer retention so uh, there are very few differentiation features or packs etc between two telecom players so how do you retain customers um this is one of the ways where you give him what he wants packaged in a single bundle making it very convenient for him to consume how does telecom do it we'll talk about it um important thing is also telecom gives ott platform access to customers maybe in a price sensitive geography or maybe in a tier 2 uh, tier 2 or tier 3 customers who are very um cost conscious or price conscious or data they don't purchase a lot of data so they're very uh, calculative in terms of where to uh, use the data so these customers are very very choosy and ott platforms get direct access to them and they can really get them to convert and become their customers while riding on the distribution platform the telecom platform. so uh, lastly we'll talk about the ott platform as i said the exclusive regional content 
is something that is getting created everyone you talk about any we talk about netflix we talk about amazon prime we talk about any platforms all of them are today investing millions of dollars in creating local exclusive content because that's where they realize that the customers want something which is very local something that they can connect to and that's where they're willing to pay so you will also see a lot of regional ott players were cropping up uh, because of this uh, latent demand that everybody is trying to tap into they also want a lot of fresh content every month otherwise they'll churn out so uh, it's a monthly pack uh, so customer ott platforms are trying to get you on an annual pack but a lot of customers stay on the monthly pack and uh, they churn out as soon as they don't see any content for that month so how do you keep uh, saturating their hunger for more and more content that's what ott platforms have to think about um as for revenues i'm sure you must have uh, read a lot of news about netflix who's the industry captain uh, reporting its first uh, uh, loss in their earnings and they're also trying to look at a board model uh, as a supplement to their sword model uh, and they've actually started uh, testing that that out so a board model will continue to rise and a board model only works where there's a huge volume of customers who are uh, who are willing to see ads in exchange for getting subsidized packs or free content right so uh, uh, for that you would need distribution you need access to millions of customers that's where telecom comes in um as i said churn is a uh, every day battle for uh, ott platforms we talk to a lot of ott platforms who are our customers and uh, they keep telling us the same thing same thing that you know it's, a, it's not a, a monthly battle it's a daily battle where we have to look at one metric that they closely track the ceo ceo of that company will track is the daily active users how many are my daily active users today is it growing or is it decreasing and what can i do to keep it growing and hence a lot of custom engagement features are coming out uh, uh, there are there are features like amazon prime has come out like watch parties we have live chat features um uh, uh, platforms are experimenting with user generated content uh they are experimenting with a lot of content partnerships um and etc etc so there are a lot of these things which uh, a movie as a platform can is helping our customers uh, look at to increase their customer engagement uh and hence retain their customers now um as i said some of some of this is uh, sorry oops yeah so some of these are already present on movie and a lot of our customers use it because they've seen that uh, looking at social media integrations looking at polls uh, and you know even betting nowadays is something that you know customers are really happy to do and get engaged with the platform and engage with the uh, content along with their friends so i think that is something which is really coming up and uh, you know uh, that that's the future anyway so while setting this background now um what is the inspiration what is the inspiration how do we uh, why does uh, these three different facets of this world needs to combine and you know what's the benefit for each of them uh, what are those overarching um horizontal aspirations or trends which are driving this not only for the present requirement but also going into the future why are why is these partnerships and alliances so important uh, for all these three uh, stakeholders so some of the trends that we've seen and which most of our customers keep talking about uh, the first trend that we see is obviously which something that I also mentioned that mobile is surpassing too right a lot of customers are consuming content um, on mobile and this is essentially uh 86% of all the consume uh, content will be on mobile by 2025 a lot of this is actually in tier 2 and tier 3 cities and price sensitive geographies where uh they are very sensitive about consuming data and hence uh, the content is uh, being consumed on the mobile more than the tv while the sales of smart tv is on the rise and you can you know read across google it and see a lot of increase in the uh, sell uh, the sales of smart tvs and fire sticks and dongles but the amount of content which is consumed on the mobile is going at a far greater pace so uh, that's where you know obviously uh, one of the 
कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दीज थ्री फैसेट्स का मिलता है टेलीकॉम प्लेयर कंबाइनिंग विद मोटिव टू प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर द कस्टमर द सेकंड ट्रेंड व्हिच आई गेस यू गाइस ऑलरेडी नो इज यू नो 5G इज गोइंग टू बी गेम चेंजर इज गोइंग टू बी यू इज ऑलरेडी सम कंट्रीज एंड सम ज्योग्राफीज 5G इज ऑलरेडी बीन डिप्लॉयड एंड इट्स इन इन द प्रेजेंट इट्स नॉट इन द फ्यूचर इट्स गोइंग टू हैपन ग्लोबली and with this uh, you know the the user experience is going to really really uh, go to the next level in terms of uh, its response times in terms of less buffering times in terms of less latency and hence the the higher resolution higher bit rate and hence the experience for the customer in streaming is going to be far far more more uh, definitive it's going to be more uh, interesting and hence this is going to be one big game changer one of the things that we generally also see uh, where uh, a lot of customers they are really fatigue there is a fatigue they don't really they go and go on to one of the subscription platforms and they really have so much content that they really don't know what to do right so uh, we are building some engagement platforms we have an like recommendation engine which is an ai recommendation engine which helps uh, you by recommending content depending on your tastes and depending on what you watch i'm sure you must have seen that in netflix uh, as well but subscription fatigue is is kind of uh, coming in and a lot of short form content which is essentially your youtube shorts or your tiktoks or any of those short form contents are really uh, gaining traction because people want to consume content at short bursts and um, a lot of uh, this is also uh, helping ott platform think about how to create those short uh, pieces of content which consumers want to watch maybe a 10 minute clip maybe a 15 minute uh, uh, tv series which has episodes of 15 minutes so those kind of innovations are coming out because there's a lot of pity which is keeping in to be uh, consumer who wants uh, you know to this to go away and you can see this uh, fatigue across industries it's not only for the uh, Uh, OTT, but is also with the others as platforms as well. Now, this is was one big trend that we see uh, a lot, and I'm sure you must have seen a lot of uh, telecom companies also now either or they have already launched or in a plan of launching an ad tech. So they've learned uh, from uh, Amazon that you know once you build up a critical mass. Uh, Amazon has already launched its own ad tech platform, which runs on Amazon.com, which is uh, today generating a huge amount of revenue for Amazon. The same model is being copied by Telecom, and OTT also kind of uh, looks at that as uh, because the things trends are going to grow at such an exponential value that you know we need to have an S word model as well as an A word model, where customers who are not willing to pay the full price can watch a few ads and. You know, still enjoy the content uh, that they want. So this is one big trend which is going to really change uh, the way people consume content, the way OTT presents content, and the way uh, the content is going to be distributed. So this one uh, trend that we see, it's a little on a tangential from what we see from a B two C customer. This is more on a B two B side. Where we see a lot of B two B customers today, which are enterprise business for telecom, who are also wanting video services and cloud video services, and this is really going to explode for a telecom operator because this part is part of the ICT portfolio for the telecom operator, and this is going to explode in the next eighteen to twenty four months because everywhere we go, we are consumers today, right? Even if you are working for an organization and we want video, we want uh, to, to learn via video. so i think uh, a lot of these initiatives are today coming forth a lot of telecom operators are looking at this as another source of revenue where a lot of content can be created and a lot of content can be potentially sold to a b2b customer rather than a b2c customer so some of the examples here is obviously uh, video live streams we are talking about uh, ott advertising we are talking about the other ott uh, options like uh, uh, communication so what are the benefits of uh, an ott to a telco obviously uh, from a subscriber perspective 
he gets a subsidized plan. So when you're bundling something, obviously it cannot be at market rate. Uh, the uh, subscriber should also feel some benefit uh, in terms of price so that I can go independently and buy a subscription of Netflix online. Or if I buy it to my telecom subscriber, what is the benefit? I so there is some, uh, some kind of cost benefit uh, that they see, which increases the perceived, uh, perceived value of the distribution. That, you know, I'm, I'm the subscriber, I'm just telecom subscriber, and they're giving me this benefit. So, you know, you tend to stick with them. Um, telcos are better positioned to kind of gather the streaming data and uh, then this data is obviously as uh, Mukesh Ambani says data is in the oil so you have uh, the, uh, you have this data that you can use and you can monetize either you can use for, for monetizing uh, for award or there can be various different models of monetization on this data which can be created um, you can also attract subscribers so as I said, uh, uh, apart from retention, if you are you have these bundled offerings, it also helps you attract more subscribers because the subscribers who essentially are moving in from other telecom players would see this benefit uh, while they are paying for voice and data, uh, but they get to subscribe uh, these uh, these packages which helps them. Uh, it is in their interest; they want to consume content, and hence they say, "Well, you know, why don't I switch over from um, from From uh, uh, OTT providers, obviously. They get scale, right? So there is one way in which you organically grow your subscriber base. The other way is where you latch on to these huge distribution mediums who push you through their distribution strength, and you know uh, that's that's what you want. Because while you know you must have heard that content is king, yes, content is king. It will always be king, but distribution is king, Tom. Right? If you don't have distribution not able to reach the right and the amount of people even if you have very high quality content you will not be able to monetize it effectively. so the question is after uh, uh, the first question was why and the second question is how how do we do this so there are some ways in which uh, telling of telecom operators are doing this uh, one of the way that you see in on your screen is uh, direct bundling so in USA you have Disney plus uh, which is bundled with Verizon. Uh, in Europe, you have uh, Netflix, which uh, which has come. Um, Vodafone is with Discovery Plus. In India, you have Jio, who is still his own ecosystem, or Jio TV and Jio Cinemas, etc. Airtel has his own X3, and B has the apps. Right. So this is one of the ways in which uh, you ride this wave. How do you do it? How do you do it? Is by creating these uh, bundled packages. Where, where according uh, with, along with your postpaid plans, you have an additional element where you pay a little extra and you get uh, these benefits in terms of uh, subscription to these platforms. So uh, the advantage is that all of this comes bundled under a single plan. So you don't have to, the customer doesn't have to pay uh, separately. He pays under a single billing. And it, it it's kind of like, you know, a mobile phone bill is like uh, you know you pay every month and then once you start paying for it you forget about it right so it's like an electricity bill so once you get that package out that's very difficult uh, to churn the customer out because the customer is used to it so i think that's where a lot of ott platforms see value because they get that chunk of customers coming in who continue to pay through the mobile phone operator So how does a telecom operator look at the partnership? Uh, one is, you know, obviously, uh, one of the bigger points that I've failed to mention is, you know, it's a, like a brand and sales group. So for both, for telecom operator as well as for the OTT platform, uh, when the telecom operator kind of uh, starts marketing its plan, etc., OTT uh, platform will get a piggy, a piggy ride, right? They get a ride where they're also kind of uh, spread across all their marketing mediums and they get that much branding and that, that many more customers. For the telecom operator as well, uh, because this OTT platform has content which customers want to watch, they also write their brand and their content and uh, they get that much mind share from the customers and hopefully retain customers and acquire customers. Now, there are various ways of uh, uh, commercial agreements in terms of revenue sharing. So it can be revenue sharing, it can be carrier billing, or it can be co-branded offerings. So you've seen all these models, uh, depending on how 
the business model of the telecom operator is they get to these different kinds of partnerships uh, with the OTT platforms. So we'll talk about some of them, uh, which uh, some of our customers are doing and uh, movie as a platform offers all this out of the box. Uh, one of them is career carrier billing, which essentially, you know, is, is very easy integration. It's secure. And essentially, as I said, once you get into the mobile phone bill or the electricity bill, then, you know, it's, uh, it's like uh, the customer is used to paying it every month. And typically the churn is far less and you get a uh, lot many customers coming in and paying it every month without any twice about it. So I think uh, carrier billing from um, an integration perspective, from a user flow perspective, from a customer convenience perspective, uh, from a money flow perspective, I think it's, it's very convenient and one of the uh, one of the best ways to kind of get this partnership rolling. Um, it's it's widely used in many of the countries, um, and uh, this is offered out of the box uh, by Mobi to all its customers. Uh, this is another way in which uh, we help uh, these partnerships by integrating the single sign-on. Where, you, where say uh, there is a platform which is offered by the telecom operator, which is say a co-branded platform or a white label platform or uh, uh, or a UI wherein uh, you log in through your mobile number, where it's a it's an SSO from that uh, virtual property to the telecom operator. So if you are say for example uh, you are an Airtel customer, and there is this uh, this uh, platform that Airtel has created, where you can only consume content. Uh, it's premium content if you are a Netel customer. So how does the platform know whether you are a Netel customer or not is you have to log in with your mobile number and then there is a direct single sign-on integration with the telecom operator which helps us recognize if you are indeed a Netel customer and then you can watch all that content. So uh, that is another way uh, in which you can potentially work this partnership together or, uh, or movie helps these partnerships to work together. Um, This is a third way in which uh, we've now seen some of the telecom operators uh, jumping into the bandwagon and building their own content delivery networks. So there are telcos who uh, are building their own CDNs. Uh, movie users uh, is platform agnostic. You can work with any CDN across the globe. Uh, we're very flexible that way, uh, but there are uh, some CDNs which are right really right up there like an Akamai or a UWS or an Amazon uh, some of the CDNs are uh, local so depending on uh, what uh, the partnership is uh, for movie essentially if we are agnostic it doesn't really matter but telco is actually moving into the CDN business it's a huge trend which is coming out uh, because uh, it requires a lot of technical expertise and a lot of investment to get this going but this is essentially an uh, investment which augurs very well from the future for the telco because they can control the user experience, they can control the content delivery, uh, they can ensure that the customers are very happy uh, while consuming the content on their platform with their CDN vis-a-vis, -vis, say, a uh, regional player to a regional CDN where the performance and the user experience may not be that good. So, this is one, one of the trends that we see is really coming up. And as I said, you know, uh, for us, it really doesn't matter. Any CDN that you have, uh, we are diagnostic and we could right ahead, go ahead and integrate wherever possible to uh, build it as, as per how you want it. So some of the other methods that uh, we see or business models that we see uh, which are happening are, uh, these are being used, so these partnerships are being used for promotions and customer acquisitions. So there are other businesses which are riding this wave where they say that if you buy this, I give you a voucher, I give you a voucher to consume uh, one month of content on Airtel Extreme. Right? Those kind of offers are now started going out where they're giving out these vouchers as a promotion or an acquisition vehicle and it can be only be valid for a telecom operator, right? So there are these partnerships which are built outside this network, which are trying to ride this entire interest wave of consumers, where consumers are really valuing that voucher so that, you know, I can uh, watch my piece, whatever I want to watch, my choice of content for one month. 
uh, on this platform if i buy that right? so those kind of uh, uh, business models are also coming up and uh, we getting a lot of interest in that because you know the underlying uh, wave is so uh, strong so these are something that uh, movie can definitely do out of the box for most of the customers so i'll just take one minute to you know talk about movie for people who really don't know uh, we are a saas platform uh, we are let me put it uh, as in in an analogy we are so shopify is to e-commerce is what movie is to ott platform so we give you a ready tech stack you can start your ott platform in of, in less than a week right from the cms to the back end which is uh, the content the storage the cdn to the front end templates uh, websites apps tv apps the entire ecosystem payment gateway integration everything is all sorted already there we have access to about 17 app ecosystem the entire it infrastructure is ready you just have to bring in your own uh, license content upload it with the meta tags choose a template and you are good to go so it's 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 that easy and then above above that obviously as i said we offer carrier billing so if you want to go and talk to telco uh, you know uh, you go and type with the telco the carrier billing is already there it's all out of the box we have recommendation engines it can help your customers consume more content and hence stay loyal to you so uh, award and sword models and pay per view models all those models are all available all out of the box so help you uh, kind of concentrate on business as i always keep telling uh, all our customers that you know we uh, talk on a daily basis that you know our job is to have your back with respect to technology rest assured you don't worry about the technology you take care of that you worry about how to scale my business what are the different ways in which i can scale my business um, and look at your daily active use account look at which models you want to go if you want distribution the technology is ready we'll help you distribute across a tv app for a 17 ecosystem how do you monetize those is something that you should think about yeah so uh, as i said uh, my last slide uh, this is uh, for all the techies out there we do all the encoding uh, storage as i said cdn we also give we also have partners who can help you with drm technology so one of the questions that we generally get the first few meetings with our prospects is you know i want to safeguard myself of in piracy can you help me with that so we brought those partners on board it which can help you with with, uh, with the drm with digital right management uh, we got adaptive bit streaming so it helps you give a better experience to the customer depending on which device and what data and what kind of uh, data plan he has we can you know change the resolution and give him a better experience so there is less buffering and analytics and all that is obviously with a given with any saas platform so thank you i hope uh, this was useful um thank you so much uh, for uh, being patient with me and uh, aditya over to you thank you so much uh, rohan this was really informative uh and uh, this is just the start i guess uh, you know, we can just wait to watch uh, how the telecom ott synergy goes ahead right yes so absolutely so before we move on to the q and a session i would request the audience to take a minute uh, to answer a very quick poll now coming on to your screens uh, if you can't see the poll you can uh, you know click on the poll icon at the bottom of the screen uh rohan while the audience is answering the poll uh, you know you mentioned that uh, uh the monetization models of svod and evod uh perhaps if you can just uh, you give us your take on svod versus the svod and evod model yeah so <clears throat> i think uh most of the uh ott platforms as in no, not only with ott i think in most industries um we follow the earlier adopters we follow the industry captains so that is industry captain in this case would be um the net netflixes of the world so netflix or an amazon prime or uh, uh, hbo plus or uh, whichever is depending on regions uh, there are different industry caps but uh, those have all uh, looked at sport as as the uh, best way to kind of uh, keep recurring revenue coming in but we are seeing that you know sport is one of the ways to monetize uh, your content the other trend is where you are having these platforms where doing the award 
where they are looking at advertising revenues and they are looking at building mass customer bases um, who can potentially then uh, watch some ads and kind of get content from you. So both of them are uh, are strong depending on you know what kind of content you have, what kind of targeting you want to, what kind of audience uh, would really like your content. I think it's a it's a, a more of a business case uh, or a strategy call between uh, business to the customer. Right. Uh, during the uh, you know slides, you also mentioned uh, you know when you talk about partnerships, uh, you spoke about acquiring uh, you know these new potential customers, right? Uh, acquiring is fine. I mean, if you can just talk about how do you retain, you know, retention is another issue that uh, most of our customers do talk about. Uh, so, if you can share your take on that as well. Yeah, I think uh, I spoke about that. I think uh, it's a, as I said, it's a daily war. Yeah. for most of the businesses to retain customers because customers are very uh, content uh, loyal rather than platform loyal and hence uh, uh, it's a it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, challenge. Most of the customer engagement tools that are coming out today are helping uh, and we, we have data to kind of back that up where those are helping uh, our customers retain, customer, retain their customers. Uh, so I, I mentioned about you know the group, uh, the social media integrations, uh, polls. We're talking about uh, uh, some some of them are spreading betting. Uh, you have these uh, live chat features. So all these are uh, really helping customers stay engaged because then then they also have their friends etc who talk about the same content, who watch the same content, it kind of creates some topics of conversations over lunches and dinners etc, which is very useful for uh, for both of them. I think uh, uh, there's a new wave of uh, this coming in. Netflix is innovating. Uh, I think that they are trying to look at different storylines. So, you know, depending on uh, the storyline gets broken into different uh, storylines, depending on what you choose. So you are given a uh, 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 way to engage with the content where you decide which way you want the content to go. I think Interactive, there are some- Interactive films. Yes, interactive yeah. films. Right? So I think a uh, lot of innovation is coming our way to keep the customers engaged because you know it's it's uh, very difficult to acquire a customer, but it's easier to retain them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope you have all answered our poll. Uh, I would now now like to open the forum for uh, discussion. Uh, please send in your queries in the community chat. I can see a few. We have already started receiving one. Uh, we appreciate you for taking our time today for attending this session. As a small token of appreciation, we would like to give out a small informative brochure to you for view later. The link of the handout will now appear on your screens. Hope you are able to view the link. Uh, in case you miss it, you can click on the chat icon at the bottom. Uh, now let's just get, get on with the most awaited part of the show, the question and answer round. Hope Rohan, uh, you are ready. Yeah, bring it on. <laughs> sure, absolutely. So the first question uh, is how effective OTT partnerships will be in boosting the profit that fixed uh, profit from fixed broadband and telephone services? That's a good question. So yeah. um, I think uh, it depends on how you model uh, the entire uh, entire packaging or the pricing. Uh, it depends on how be how best you understand your customer. So uh, those are two things that you have, have to understand. Um, there is uh, money to be made for sure. I think there are success stories everywhere uh, in, in this kind of a, a modeling or a partnership arrangement. It's just that these two things are something that you need to get a, uh, what is your customer willing to pay and how much is he willing to pay extra for. So uh, there, are no, there are no straight uh, base for it. I think a little bit of AB experiment or AB testing or experimentation is required with different price points. I think everybody's done that. Even if you see, uh, um, if you also look at Netflix, Netflix has done uh, this AB experimentation across various markets because they went in with an idea that you know this is the price point that the customer is willing to pay, and they were uh, very surprised to find that the customer is not willing to pay that. Price. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the next question is: uh, Do you have any examples of shows or networks that have gone on their uh, from their own OTT setup? To being signed on in uh, from the big ones like Netflix, Hulu, and others. Um, 
I guess I mean uh, there are a few if you uh, if you look at uh, you know stars that have appeared on YouTube. Uh, we have seen you know a transition where uh, you know uh, production houses from Netflix have actually taken up uh, these YouTubers and uh, given them their own shows. Uh, you know, given them this platform or or, or even a larger audience base or a loyal audience base. If you, you know, to put it at. uh some i can you know name a few could be rust peters could be one uh, who, who became famous uh, for a stand up comedy he was given his own show a lot of reality shows uh, stars are uh, do you know transition from different platforms uh, you know according to me uh yeah, absolutely in fact uh, the reverse trend is also happening yeah absolutely so i have seen a lot of our uh, customers that we are talking to today uh, have started only producing content for these big industry giants and i have now realized that you know uh, uh why don't i build my own platform so they've created this uh, library of content and now they are producing content specially or specifically for their own platform which they might not license yeah. uh, to to these players that's number 1 number 2 uh, we've got some customers who while have the same content on their platform these are be say a uh, netflix or an amazon prime but on their platform they are they are looking at superior experiences right so the audio will be dolby the video will be 8k right and they are targeting very very niche audiences who have that kind of a setup uh, uh where they are willing to pay for those subscriptions because they want very superior experiences so they have uh, those kind of hardware they have that kind of broadband so that is also one niche that is coming out where the same content is available on both sides but these are very discerning customers who want something more uh the next question is uh, having an advertisement in the sword module uh, is advisable for example disney plus hotstar uh, uh sorry could you repeat that uh it's more of a question like ha- does having an advertisement in an sword module uh, advisable for example you know platforms like disney plus hotstar yeah so uh clear answers i don't know i think this is something which will evolve uh, over the next uh, 12 to 18 months uh, ro- nobody really knows i think if you see everybody is experimenting uh, there are models which people are experimenting in terms of renting models where uh, content is been released only for renting maybe a couple of months before it comes as a normal subscription package there are pay per views uh, which are been experimented there are as you said you know a bot within s bot which is been experimented we really don't know i think uh, it's the customer who is going to teach us right the next question uh, is does movie help its customer with bundle packages uh, with other streaming services uh in terms of uh, so let me understand this question so if yeah. if i understand it correctly i the question is uh, does movie customers also bundle their their uh, uh platforms with other tele- telecom operator services is that uh, it's it's more like does movie help its customers with uh, bundle packages with other uh, i mean two bundle packages with other streaming services probably when the person is uh, launching their own platform we help them you know bundle packages with other streaming services perhaps another customer uh so uh, what we do is uh, we are essentially a technology stack so, you know that's where our expertise is as i said you know uh, we when we talk to our customers we say you know we, we have your back in terms of your technology but how do you monetize your content what are those models we will provide you all the technology but at the end of the day it's your part because it's your content we are not the experts on that so that's where we kind of uh, draw a line gotcha. uh the next as uh, uh, a comment uh, a remark and followed by a question uh, i'll try to summarize it as uh, much as i can it's the person is mostly uh, speaking about s word versus t word uh, he says that overall uh, s word is uh, has a staggered approach uh, when it comes to earning from content uh, so it's, it's sort of you know hurting the content industry and t word is perhaps the uh, right option so he wants to know your thoughts uh, on and uh, on how should a content owner uh, be monetizing their content as they release it on OTT for the first time yeah it's a little bit a complex question yeah, yeah so it's uh, yeah it's a it's not a straight answer to that uh, as i said you know it depends on a lot of things it depends on um, you know uh, 
the target audience for your content it depends upon which platform you're talking to it depends upon that platform strategy uh, yeah. it, it there are a lot of uh, uh, variables and factors which go into this uh, but at the end of the day as i said you know uh, there are only two things that you have to take care of one is content is king right so you have content you have uh, the king maker right but distribution is king content. so Absolutely. if you don't distribute your content however good it may be um, you will not be able to monetize it effectively so these are the only uh, two principles that i think all content owners should think about right absolutely so the next question uh, is another comment uh, is the presentation could be shared yes we will be sharing these uh, presentation with you soon uh, after the webinar okay the next question is for mobile operators especially from africa is it possible to uh, keep content local to manage the cost down and minimize buffering Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So that's where, as I said, a lot of telecom operators are also building their own CDN networks. So keep it local so that uh, you know uh, a lot of this user experience gets controlled. Uh, however, having said that, uh, you know uh, your large cloud operators also have their local experiences. So uh, if you're talking about uh, a large geography, I don't think it it kind of um, matters too much if you have. one of the top 3 as part of your tech stack i think it's it's kind of in our experience or uh, a lot of our customers do not see too much of a difference but at the end of the day it's you know uh, it's it's more of a long term vision as to what we want to do say 2 3 years 5 years down the line how is your content going to scale up what are the different distribution networks you going to look at <coughs> what are the different kinds of content you're looking at so for example vod content uh is is comparatively lighter as compared to live stream so yeah. are you looking at live streaming content to add going forward then it makes sense to kind of look at better investments because live streaming if there is buffering live stream customers don't like it at all right even if we are watching a any kind of sports and there is there is buffering uh, we will hate it but yeah. say in a vod little bit of buffering we are okay right so um so depends on not on that Uh, the next question is: uh, If an OTT provider has VOD content on their own CDN, can they use movies platform, or does movie require all VOD content to be stored in movies CDNs or movie CDN partners? So, as I said, you know, we yeah. are completely platform agnostic. Yeah, we we do have something called as bring your own CDN. Yeah. So we 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 integrate that for you. Uh, the next is: How does a new entrant in the streaming service, uh, you know, target a niche audience? Uh, Oh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, let me repeat that. How does a new entrant in the streaming service targeting a niche audience build a symbiotic relationship with the telco providers, and how SaaS providers like Movie have a good impact? Okay. So, uh, if you if you have a uh, target audience is a very niche content or a very niche uh, uh, content or a very niche audience, then I think uh, you have to look at. Uh, Very different platforms because telecom is mass, right? So they will, if whatever kind of partnerships you look at from a telecom perspective, uh, they they will help you reach a mass audience. So even if you are looking at a, a very niche audience, I'm sure you'll be surprised that a lot of different kinds of audiences that you never thought would consume your content actually do consume your content. As I said, you know, at the start of my uh, uh, presentation, that today consum- consumers are very discerning. they want to uh, uh, consume a lot of content which is of different languages or different genres so uh, you don't know uh, really you know uh, which you might be wanting to target a particular audience but the other audience is might surprise you really uh, in terms of how movie can help you as i said you know our uh, expertise is the tech stack we've been over a decade we've been doing this our, ent- our platform is enterprise grade built over 10 years of uh, working with thousands of customers so anything you need from a technology standpoint it's all uh, it's all there as i said the entire uh, stack is all ready uh, wherever you want any kind of uh, carrier billing integration any kind of uh, sso etc it's all out of the box you just have to think of waste one by the way the next question is if an ott platform ties up with the mobile operators say at it Will it share the customer's base uh, info with the OTT platform, or will the telecom operator share only the, uh, the revenue and not the customer base? 
Uh, so yeah, so that's a good question. So as I said, there are various different models available. Uh, it's up to you how you kind of uh, work with the telecom operator. Typically, across aggregator businesses uh, or the customers, people would not want to share customer data. Uh, so, but it's not that I'm saying that a telecom operator won't. It depends upon how, what kind of model you work with them. But even if you look at parallel industries, let's say um, uh, BFSI or banking or any other uh, retail industry, uh, uh, corporations are typically shy of uh, sharing customers. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so that brings us uh, to the end of the Q&A session. Uh, Movie keeps conducting these webinars each month uh, on some interesting industry topics and also showcases some of the movie's best offerings. I would personally request all of you, all of our viewers, to keep a lookout for our social media channels and the website for the registration link of our upcoming webinars. So once again, thank you for tuning in and allowing us to present you with such uh, more informative and uh, value-adding webinars. Uh, this is your host Aditya signing off. Until next time. And I would also like to thank Rohan for taking out time for conducting this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for uh, investing your time with us. Hopefully, we were able to add value and share some information and insights that we gleaned to our uh, various interactions with uh, all three of these uh, facets. Thank you so much. <laughs>